welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. I try to make this every year, but I can't make it every year because getting reindeer milk is getting more and more challenging. I have a supplier in Alaska that has been very reliable, but they had a rather bad year last year. And this year, things turned around a bit. So I was very fortunate that I was able to get in a, a gallon. I would, would have liked to have got a lot more, but because of that, I'm making a smaller batch of soap here. I'm just making uh, some my round bars, but I decided to try a couple of different things with these. Uh, <laughs> intentionally, I was going to stamp these soaps. I have this cute little reindeer approved cookie stamp, but I just was not pleased with the smoothness of the top of the soap. In addition, I just didn't think that the stamps showed up as clearly, and you'll see that here in the video. I just wasn't as pleased with the outcome as I hoped I would be, so I actually ended up uh, doing piping on these, which is something I'm still not real good at or very comfortable with, but I'm working on it. This is scented with pure peppermint essential oil, and I have to tell you, this is one of my all-time favorite essential oils to use in soap. First of all, Wow, it really holds on well in cold process soap, better than I think a lot of essential oils do. And also, uh, it's just, I think, of a favorite of a lot of people. Now, what I'm doing here is I made too big a batch for this size bucket. This is a one and a half gallon bucket, and after adding in my solution, it just got a little overflowed so I'm just moving it up to a three gallon bucket. Uh, these are my very own milk buckets. Uh, now I will tell you that I don't use these particular ones for actually milking the goats. These are ones that I've purchased strictly for making soap. But I'm always proud to use uh, things that I already have. But in the case of soaps, because I do make some vegan soaps and I do make some soaps that have tallow in them and soaps that have goat milk in them and beeswax or uh, lanolin, which are certainly not vegan, I do have to keep separate sets. So I actually have four sets of stainless steel buckets just for this particular purpose. And someone had actually asked me recently, is that a milk bucket? And yes, that's what these are indeed. And they work perfectly. They're stainless steel. They clean so well. Uh, they don't hold a scent in them like plastics do. Uh, any of you that have made soaps in plastic, I'm sure you're familiar with that retaining, that they retain uh, fragrances sometimes. And that's not beneficial, especially when you're working with customers who may be very sensitive to those things. Anyway, I'm going on and on about this. But one of the things that I have learned over time is that you have to always keep your customer in mind. And for the longest time, I was just my own customer. The only reason my mother made soaps and things is because I was a sensitive child. I'm adopted. Um, my birth mother was a not a very good mother, did not take care of herself, and I had a lot of sensitivities and problems as a child. And so my adoptive mother, who I will just call my mother, um, had learned how to make soap and things from her mother. And so started making those things for me. That's how I started soaping at a very young age and making other things as well. But the reason I bring all of this up is that um, when I'm making products, I always keep my own self in mind. What things I'm sensitive to, what things 
can hurt me and extrapolate that to my customers. Now, not every customer is as sensitive as I am, and some are even more sensitive than I am. An example is that some people are so very sensitive that if you've made a, for example, a soap that is completely scent-free, color-free, and you put it in a sack or you put it in a bag or whatever the case may be, but you have touched a fragrance or an essential oil with that or it's been in the vicinity, people that are very sensitive to that can actually smell that. And for them, that is a real problem. So it's certainly something that I take into consideration with my customers. Um, and it's a challenge. It is because you have to remember that we're not only serving ourselves, that we are serving others. To me, that is the like a calling uh, that I do take very seriously. And here's an example, reindeer milk soap. There are people who are allergic to specific things, specific types of animals. There is actually a condition um, that people that have this condition, uh, alpha-gal is one of them, uh, cannot be exposed to anything that comes from beef or sometimes maybe even other uh, animals, I don't know. All the ins and outs of that as I'm not a doctor and I don't have the condition and I've not discussed it enough to know these things. But I do know that the few that I do know require it be completely vegan. Now there are people, on the other hand, who are allergic to many vegan oils. Okay, so they can't use seed oils, for instance, sunflower oil or almond oil, or I could go down the line. And so with those people, actually tallow is a better option for them. So you're constantly having to keep these things in mind when you're serving your customers. And I'm probably not telling you, if you're a soap maker, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is more just information I put out there for people that look at me and may wonder about my own products. I just like to fill them in on the things I do take into consideration and the things that matter to me. So, Really, there's not much more to say about this particular soap, except about the color itself. As I stated, the stamps I just was not happy with. I it just, for me, for this particular soap, I think in maybe a different color soap it would have worked. But in this one, I wanted something red and... Using red reef clay can sometimes give you more of a brick color. So what I decided to do was to add in some of my 24 karat gold dust into this to give it more of a mica kind of look, you know, the sparkliness of it. And it looked great here uh, in the actual mixing bowl. I thought, oh, this is going to be so pretty. Um, I actually added even more of the gold dust to try to give it just that extra oomph. And again, it looked really great when I was mixing it. But once the soap, uh, once the soap started to mix, I noticed that it became more dull, that the gold wasn't coming through, that it was just kind of that duller, but not dull, I shouldn't use the word duller, but matte, a more of a matte finish red. And I wanted something a bit more sparkly with a bit more oomph. So you'll see that I actually sprinkled go dust on top of these as well, just to give it that little bit more. And this is also scented, this uh, topping that I'm going to be putting on here, or I'm putting on here is actually made with the same peppermint essential oil. Now, I didn't use the uh, reindeer milk for this. I just used a aloe vera blend uh, for my lye solution. And the reason for that is I wanted this to get very thick. I wanted it to be very pipable, 
and because I'm not an expert at piping or anything, what I do know is that when I use my goat milk, and I can say the same, I think, for most milks that I use, that the soap stays fluid longer than it does with the aloe vera. The aloe vera tends to make it come together a little quicker, and so I thought for piping purposes, this would make more sense. I did overfill my piping bag. I'm aware of that. I know many of you may be looking at this and going, what a mess. And I didn't do the best job of piping <laughs> because quite frankly, I'm not very patient when it comes to doing these sort of finer detail things. But I gave it the old college try, maybe more of the grade school try. <laughs> <laughs> but I am pleased that they're better than they were just plain. I think that they have a little more of a Christm Christmassy je ne sais quoi. And by adding the gold glitter on top, gold glitter, uh, the gold dust, excuse me, on top, it, it does look like glitter. I think it really does give it a lot more of that sort of holiday fun, that metallic-y, uh, celebratory look. Hope that makes sense. I had a lot of fun putting them together. I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. Uh, if you do have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. I love speaking to everybody. Uh, drop me emails. I'm not so good at coming back and posting comments or replying to comments. I just don't seem to have enough time in the day sometimes to do that and ship out orders. A prime example is that I shipped out over 70 packages yesterday. And uh, with the holidays coming up, I know it's going to get even busier, which I'm not complaining about. I have a lot of fun doing this. And uh, thank you all so very much. Take care and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye. Thank you.